I don't even know how to start it. <laughs> that was good. He didn't knock your mic down. <laughs> What's up, y'all? My name's Leticia, and you're listening to Confessions from the Closet, a podcast all about vulnerability and overcoming. It's time we get ourselves unstuck from these boxes and these closets that we've allowed ourselves to be trapped in. We're so much bigger than these boxes we've been in. It's time we go deep, y'all. Hello. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another week of Confessions from the Closet. I'm just going to start because it's been three or four weeks since we filmed. We've been super busy. Um, t- super busy. I feel like this is the busiest season of our life together. For sure. For sure. And it's not bad. It's good busy, but it's hard to get it all done. Hard busy, good busy, good sad busy, busy, hard busy, sad busy, two kids busy, expensive busy, <laughs> life busy. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, if you watch us on YouTube, you know that I've been putting out new videos of us converting our school bus. So that takes time and planning because mm-hmm. if I don't plan out how I'm going to film that, it's way more work in the production area of doing it. Plus I don't know what I'm doing. So there's also that I've never built a bus before (laughs) built an RV on a bus before. So it's all a learning process and I'm still in the easy part. So good luck, Leticia. Anyways, um, we're glad to be back though. I'm going to try to get a bunch filmed before the holidays. And when we're, we know we're going to be busy, uh, got another soccer tournament this weekend coming up. That's exciting. Amaya's soccer team has done really well this year and they're getting better and I'm excited to see her play. We haven't been going lately because again, we're too busy (laughs) to go all the time. Um, We celebrated Dia de los Muertos last week on the 2nd, November 2nd, Dia de los Muertos. Um, And we had been to one before, but I just never paid attention to the true meaning of it. It never meant as much to me as it did this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up learning about it. My mom was my Spanish teacher and she taught us about it. But like, again, the significance of what it is and the the culture and the history behind it, I didn't understand until this year. And we never dress up. Like I, I (laughs) avoid it like the plague, but something I've been trying to be better at this just the past couple of months really is being more brave and doing things that I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. Um, and not having to drink like a whole bottle of alcohol before I do it, you know, just like, just do it. Um, so we painted our faces and dressed up and <laughs> I'll add a picture in here. I did a good job though. I painted our faces. Yes. I had never painted faces before. And, um, yeah, I, I was bummed we didn't win, but the ladies who won had some epic costumes. I was going for, like, the couple thing because it's a traditional, like, there's, like, the wedding dress and the, like, suit. So we dressed. I mean, money didn't wear a wedding dress, but we tried to be traditional and um, learn some of the history behind it. But Dia de los Muertos, if you don't know, is a Mexican culture tradition. It started with the Aztecs and you're honoring your lost loved ones who've gone before you. And there's one day a year where it's believed that they can come back to visit you, but you have to set up an ofrenda, which is like an, like an offering type thing in English. Um, And they put up food for them for their long travels and you put up candles and uh, you put up their picture. If you've ever seen Coco, it would make more sense to you. So you should definitely watch Coco. I've seen Coco. very good. I've seen Coco so many times. This year it made me cry. Yeah. When it got to the end and that guy was fighting so hard to get back to see his loved ones. And he was disappearing because he was being forgotten. And his picture hadn't been put up. Oh, it broke my heart. And having lost a few people who we were very close to this year, and especially just recently in the past four months and two months, it was to go in there to something that was been fun before and then to see their pictures up on the altar. It was, it was, I had to walk away because it just, it got me because it's like, oh, there's those moments in life that make 
mm-hmm. the loss real. And then most of the time I'm over here with like a brain injury, just waiting for them to come back. Um, because this just doesn't feel real still, but that night it felt real and, but it was nice to honor them and to think about them and yeah. So it was a really beautiful thing. And we dressed up, which was very brave. And we went up for the costume contest, which, which was, was even more brave. Yes. Um, I hate. To oh, I wanted to just throw up. I was like, we're going to go as a couple. We are one. Maybe then we ha- can win together. Yeah, we didn't win. But um, yeah, we did it first. Second, Apollo's third, still pissed we didn't win. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I'm so mad you didn't win at the party, mama. <laughs> like, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had a costume contest. I'm like, we did not dress up this good to not enter this contest. And both- shout out to our friend Dale who does that. Yeah, every I was like, year. I think that's ten. That that I don't know. Year, just time. Said. It's like an art yes. show as well. Man, and art, uh, Sloshy sponsored it this year. The margarita thing. It's a local well, margarita they popsicle. Are good. Yeah, I had a not few. That we didn't have ten, but. There. Between the two of us, yes. I think we did have 10. <laughs> they were so good. They were really good. Um, but yeah, even going up for that contest was like, we're going up there. Both of our hearts were beating so hard. I was like, I'm going to puke. And as soon as it got done, I was like, go get another margarita. Like, I was so nervous, but we were brave. So I was proud of us. Good job. We looked super cute, too. Um, I, I was yeah, like, you did I did get on that makeup. So. Anyways, that's, I mean, that was one thing we just recently did. The bus is keeping me so busy, plus laundry and practice and all the things. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the, I have a couple of things. I was like, oh, we could talk about this um, on our list today. Some of them just so you can stick around and hear about them. Um, just the importance of people coming out in, on, like, in the public media, in sports, in, we talk about this all the time, but more, more people keep coming out, and I just want to touch on some of that. Also, Jojo Siwa, probably. Apollo's obsessed now. He is. We, he He's loves so Jojo funny. Siwa, and the way he says it, I want to see if I can get a video of him saying it, but, like, it's like one word, <laughs> and it's adorable. Jojo Siwa. I want to. I want to watch like, okay. Jojo on YouTube. I'm like, okay, whatever. But um, her on Dancing with Stars, her first breakup, and just I thought that could be a cool way to kind of talk about what it was like for us, because I think it's different when you come out later in life, and then breaking up mm. with the gender or whatever that you're attracted to versus we were dating men and it wasn't you know it was different um yeah and then we got a comment we've been getting comments on one of our old videos like episode 10 can you be gay and catholic i think it's episode 10 i'll I'll put in the show notes but um some negative comments i don't know one of them wasn't so negative it was just obviously on the opposite belief system of what ours is and uh opinion i guess an opposite opinion Mm -hmm. and then one of them got deleted i don't know if the lady deleted it we tried finding it me and my friend who has a youtube channel a very successful one at that but we were trying to figure out where this comment went because i could see it but then it disappeared and it wasn't on the video and uh i couldn't read the whole thing which really bothers me because i knew it went into like when anyone uses the word homosexuality in a comment, I know they're still behind on the education and lingo because that is a that is not a word I use and throw around. I mean, it feels so derogatory to me. Like, ooh, homosexual. Like, okay. <laughs> Just say I'm gay, I guess, if you want to label it. So those are a few things that I thought we could touch on today. Um, I feel kind of out of practice for this. I had gotten really good at talking with you and so i'm going to try not to talk at you today because <laughs> i got good at it and then we stopped we got too busy um so if you're one of our faithful listeners thanks for coming back and giving us some grace on our just little two-week break it's only been two weeks since we've had an episode up but i it's been I like a few weeks since we filmed and uh yeah we're gonna get a bunch filmed the next month so we can have them all through december so yeah, let's get into it. Um, so Tom Daly is an Olympic diver for the UK 
and he came out seven years ago. And I get these articles pushed across my Facebook, usually from Pink News, which is, from what I'm understanding, mostly LGBTQ news. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was an article when he won his gold medal this past Olympics. He said, I'm proud to be an Olympian and a gay man. And someone wrote on Twitter, I think it was, his sexuality or sexual his sexual preference has nothing to do with him being an Olympian or his ability to dive. Where someone came back and said, it has everything to do. It is important. Because the guy was like, it's not relevant. And this article talks about how it is relevant because... I wish it didn't have to be. Yeah. And he, and he said that. Tom mm-hmm. said that. We wish it didn't have to be. We wish... Even in his coming out video, he said, I wish this didn't have to be a thing, which is something we talked about on that last episode. Like Carl Nassib said the same thing. Mm -hmm. I wish this didn't have to be a thing. Um, There's an Olympic skier who came out a few years ago. I can't think of his name right now. Super handsome guy. Same thing. Wish this didn't have to be a thing. Um, But Tom is at the Olympics and the guy who wrote this article responding to this tweet said, he's at the Olympics where there are 10 nations who would execute Tom for being gay. Mm -hmm. This is in 2021. Crazy. Yeah. And so he said it is relevant because one, the representation is still needed because we are here. We are valid. And, um, two, they were fighting for those countries to be banned from the Olympics because of that. And then I read some more articles about Tom and he had said like when he first came out, he was like invited to Russia, I think where I don't know if it's still illegal, but it was at the time. I'm pretty sure it still is, um, to go compete. And he did it because he was so afraid that he could get kidnapped and executed or imprisoned because those are both things that happen to you in those countries. If you are gay and you're found out. And I know in like Africa, cause we have some listeners there, they said the same thing. If, if someone sees your text messages that are like loving, and you're texting someone of the same sex, you can be arrested. And which is crazy. It's just like in your text. But if someone sees it and then they report it, you can get arrested. So I'm sorry, writing a letter. Yeah. Well I'll burn them. Right, burn them. Um but Tom didn't want to go because he was afraid. And then now looking back, he realized that it was what did he say? He said basically Hold on, I have it written down. Whoops, hitting my thing. Where'd you know it's woman? I know, I have it. <laughs> You're so dumb. Oh, Come goodness. Me. Maybe I didn't write it down, but basically... It was more important for him to go and represent our community versus live in fear. Like that was more impactful than him boycotting the event Mm -hmm. that it would be. He realized that it would be more impactful for him to show up and show face than to boycott it. Cause that what impact and what difference did that make? And he realized that. And I, I think that's a very important thing because even like with us at the church, like even Sunday, you know, our church is in this weird, feels like limbo with ever since we lost our pastor, tragically, like there's no one that's filling that space. And there's not that we want someone to fill that space yet. It's still so tender, but it still feels weird because we keep having like different people preaching. And the guy who preached on Sunday came and introduced himself to me between services because I'm on the worship team and I'd been there all morning. And he was saying, thanks for your worship. Y'all are so great. And then introduced himself and asked what I did. And I I mean, my walls, I tried to let them stay down, but they went up because I know he's been at our church for three years. He's preached once before, but Daryl was there and Daryl always protected me from anything that might threaten Mm -hmm. me or someone who might say something to me. And um, I didn't know this. I don't know him and I don't know anything about this guy, except he used to be a preacher. Um, and that's just because they told me that before worship because I was asking questions. I'm like, who is he? What does he do? You know, because I'm also yeah. protective of that house. That's, it's been safe for us. 
and the threat that it could not be safe it mm-hmm. is real to my mind right now. I don't believe that that's going to happen because of our leadership. They're not going to fall backwards. They're going to keep doing what Daryl was doing. But I was afraid. And I even asked Catherine, who's the worship leader and my best friend afterwards, was like, does he know I'm married to Madi? And she's like, yeah, he knows. He's been there. And I'm like, but are you sure he knows? Because, <laughs> you know, not everyone yeah. knows. Some people still assume we're sisters. Yeah. And he sits on the opposite side of the church in the back. Like we never see each other, but I was, I mean, my walls started creeping up because there's this fear of if he finds out, he's going to say something that hurts me, um, that offends me. And no one else was around to come in and stand up for me and protect me and defend me. And it's very real because church is a still a scary place and it's still not a completely safe place. Our church is, but I did not know him, mm-hmm. you know, um, so even like saying that, like Tom going and representing himself, like me being there in the church and representing myself and our community, and that's important. Mm-hmm. And what did, you, what did he tell you? What did you say? Oh, he just asked what I did besides worship. Ooh, my phone's actually on. I apologize. Oh, um, he asked what I did besides worship, and I was like, oh, basically raise kids. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, and I have a podcast, and I'm building a bus and I forgot that I do slideshows now, but, um, it's like basically I raise kids. I mean, that's the majority of my job. Home keeper, home, what's really they called? I don't know. Housewife. Is that still appropriate lingo? I don't know, but that is a stay at home mom who also works. Um, but two of my jobs don't make me money. Three of my jobs don't make me money yet. (laughs) I have five things that I do. The stay at home mom one has 700 things in it alone. Uh, Not yet. Yeah. But three of them I make zero dollars at. So (laughs) you 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 take care of me. Um, (laughs) Anyways, it, it just made me super nervous. And I think that that representation is important in all arenas, especially the church. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's more athletes coming out, which was another thing on Pink News. Like, there's a, the first ever pro level footballer, not football, soccer. U.S. soccer called football. Um, he came out. I think he plays for Australia, and that was a big deal. And he said, "I've finally, I'm finally comfortable to share this truth after living a double life for so many years. And some of the responses back were like, how sad is that, that he had to live a double life that we live in a world where the athlete is so scared to get rejected or kicked out of their profession. Cause at that level, it is a profession. They're getting paid, Mm -hmm. especially the men's soccer way more than the women's. Um, Obviously, he's the, now that I'm thinking about this, obviously he was the first in the male side. There's a lot of women in yeah. pro soccer that are out, obviously. Yeah. Abby Wambach, um, Megan Rapino, Ashley. What, I can't even think of her last name right now. Um, Allie, Allie Krager and Ashley. cannot think of her last name. They're beautiful. They're married. Just adopted a beautiful baby. There's lots of women out, especially yeah. in U.S. women's soccer. Um, but that, that was a big deal and that like, it sucks that you have to live this double life. And even on Sunday, that's kind of how I felt. And like, do I say, well, my wife works like, do I, I I just kind of panicked. I was like, "Eh, these kids, I don't know. I wish if you're not watching, you should watch. Did you see my face? I was like, it was like a deer in headlights. I was like, (laughs) you had done that. I just went, I was like, I'm going over there. <laughs> They're asking what she does. I didn't, well, no, I can hear her, but I could just see. And I was like, no, I'm very awkward in the mornings, too. Oh, I'm so too. awkward, I'm period. Been, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like my one day off, and I, I still get up early, so I take care of the kids. And I'm not very sociable early. And I've been up, I had been up since seven. I am. But my God, I don't ever get That's conf- how I get. I mean, how do you think I feel at work when they're like, oh, I don't yeah. get those, yeah. Uh, when I'm like, oh, like oh, this week. You homeschool? Oh, we're talking about homeschool. And you're like, how do you do that? <laughs> and I'm like, shoot, okay. Because they would uh, assume you would homeschool because yes, you're a woman. I'm a woman. And like, <laughs> well, my wife's at home. She stays at home. Oh. And there's just always just so awkward. <laughs> okay, I think your home's done uh, transferring. Uh, 
<laughs> get the hell out. Or sometimes I mean, actually they were really cool, but um, it's always that shoot. Yeah. You gotta. Oh, didn't someone say something about where you're going for lunch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> where are you going for lunch? It's like home. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's it's one whatever my. What's for lunch? Yeah. yeah. Whatever my wife makes. Has ready. Whatever she found in the fridge. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, I got nothing. Uh, Yeah, it was, I don't get confronted with those situations. So it was like, and it's in church. And I know my position as a worship leader is safe. I know we worked hard for everything. And I've, I've given my testimony at our church. So he may have heard my testimony for all I know. I don't know. I gave it about three years ago. Um. Because Apollo was already born. So it was about this time. Uh, So maybe he heard it. I don't know. But I was super like, you know, because you you don't want your feelings hurt. I don't. I'm very, that's one of those things that hurts and triggers me. And um, yeah, (laughs) I was like, I raise kids. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I had something that, oh, which can lead into the next topic, which was the comment on, can you be gay and Catholic? And that guy commented, I'll just read it because I'll mess it up. Just, I think I took a screenshot. Did I send it to you? Yeah, I did. Okay. And this is triggering because we had one of Maddie's cousins, ex-wives, I roll, um, when we got engaged and we may have talked about this on the podcast, I don't know, but we, when we got engaged, which was very soon. So it could have been from that. Now looking back, we got engaged like two weeks after we met three weeks, maybe, um, <laughs> it was like 26 days. Okay. Counting. Yeah. It's September 26th. That's when I proposed. And I think we met on like August 31st. <laughs> so 26 days. Um, when you know, you know, Anyways, I, it was a big deal. Some people walked out. I wrote a blog about it. Sorry, not sorry was the title. And I got this one comment that said, my dear sister in Christ. And it was from this cousin's ex-wife. And, uh, I'm not going to talk bad about her or anything, whatever. But that, it was like this, have you read about this? Have you prayed? I have read many books on this topic. I'm like, be word, please like go on with yourself. So that is triggering. Cause it's like my dear sister in Christ. So anytime anyone does that kind of crap to me, I'm like, cut your shit, just Leticia or something like calm down with the, my dear sister in Christ. I don't want that woo woo religion shit. I just don't like, let's not sugarcoat stuff in God. Like if you're being hateful, just own it. Yeah. You know, like don't code it. And Oh, this is my love of God. I'm loving you Christ. Like, no, you're not. You're inserting your opinion. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay. Obviously, a touchy subject. So, I got a comment. This is the one that didn't get deleted. And I am a smartass. One, because I married one and I had to become a better one at, at it. Okay. <laughs> because she's very sarcastic. And I had to become quick with my comebacks. I was not this bad when we got married. And you can. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, really? What did you create? Yeah. You did yeah. this. So I want to respond and be smart and like, but I also realize I'm creating a channel and a brand and I also want to be a good human. So this is the comment. Greetings. Peace be with you all with prayer hands. And that right there, I was like, good Lord Jesus, help me. Um, On the question of, there's a lot of typos in this, so I'm going to try to read it right. Can one be gay and Catholic, dot, dot, dot. Well, the phrase, quote, gay Catholic refers to a person who struggles against those particular gay desires and temptations. So, yes, I believe being, quote, a gay Catholic, he didn't end quote, is possible. However, the description, quote, gay Catholic, is not accurate for such a person since he slash she does not desire to be gay and is struggling against the temptations. Such a person is not a, quote, gay Catholic, but rather, which I'm like, okay, first of all, this is confusing, but rather is simply a struggling Catholic. 
put a quote at the end of that. That was rude. Just as there are Catholics who struggle with fornication, lying, stealing. Okay, first of all, who uses the word fornication? If the phrase, quote, gay Catholic, no end quote, again, refers to a person who actively, perpetually, and unrepentantly lives a gay lifestyle, then no, it is not possible for such a person to truly be a Catholic based upon God's, all caps, word in the Bible. God bless. Prayer hands. Now, I have not responded to this comment yet. I had a whole thing written, which I kind of want to read, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to, but I did want to say peace, peace be with you. Like as a smart remark at the end, um, so maybe one, I think the guy didn't watch the video because we explained what we're talking about. Can you be gay and Catholic? Meaning, does the Catholic Church as a corporation allow you to be, one, an active member, a serving member, any of that? That was the point of that video. Yeah. And the answer is no. Unless you are a celibate, you can, you can identify as a, I'm gay, but I don't act on those feelings. And they might let you serve. They might accept you. I think they do. Um, and that was the point of that video, which makes me think he did not watch the video. Reading that again and seeing all those typos is a little irritating too. <laughs> Lots of quotes, um, without quotes at the end of the word that he was quoting, just quotations <laughs> everywhere. You must've been homeschooled by me. No, <laughs> just kidding. Hi, <laughs> if there's anything I get right, it's proper English and quotation use. Thank you, Gigi. Um, <laughs> golly, I appreciate the comment. Negative comments and positive comments both help my videos get out there, so I appreciate it. Uh, but maybe we didn't do a good job explaining can you be gay and Catholic? No quotes. There's no quotes about that. I am a gay person. I'm married to a woman. I identify as gay. You could call me lesbian. That's not a word I like throw around, whatever. That's the technical term. Some people would call themselves queer because it's a blanket term for LGBTQ. I identify as a gay woman if you want me to label myself. I love Jesus. I've known his voice since I was four years old. I've known the voice of the Holy Spirit. I was raised with the Holy Spirit in my household. I was raised Pentecostal. I know the Lord. I've known it my whole life. Can you be gay and Catholic? Now, Catholic Catholicism is a religion who also believes in Jesus. But that religion, and from, am I using the right words? Because I'm trying to be very careful. I'm not trying to piss anyone off. But I, and I believe this not just about Catholicism. I believe this about churches as a whole, especially right now. Mm-hmm. It is a corporation. It is, there's a lot of indoctrination. I believe this about public schools too. That's why I won't send my back to school. Um, some of these things teach you not to think for yourself, not to trust your own inner voice, not to trust, oh, but they're a good person. Why can't I love them? That's your voice and your heart saying that, oh, well, because the Catholic Church or the Pentecostal Church or the Baptist Church told me not to. But my inner voice yeah. is telling me to, and you're telling me I can't, that's up there I can't trust myself. That's what's concerning for me, yeah. you know. Um, if I have a big, important decision, I'm learning, especially, and this comes from reading Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I know the answer I want to choose. So why am I going to go ask 700 people on Facebook or however many people on Facebook or my friends for their advice when I already know the decision I want to make? Usually I say, hey, babe, does this outfit look okay? I know what I want to wear, but I also know I'm not very good at matching things. You know what I mean? Like, I know that this shirt really doesn't go with this brown shirt. It just doesn't look right to me. But I wanted to wear a flannel shirt, so I did. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, know. I get that this red does not really match this red. I understand that, but I'm not at church. It's fine. Oh, thanks. Anyways. So when I say, can you be gay and Catholic? Can you serve in the Catholic church? If you're an openly gay person in a, like you're in a relationship. No, you can't. They won't let you. 
They won't. And the same as other churches. Most churches in Mm. America still won't let you. We go to a church where they're breaking the barriers and realizing that that is not, that's not the love of Christ. And I was talking to my mom about this comment and I was like, it's like a modern day Jews and Gentiles, the Samaritans. Jesus loved them. He went and talked to them. Mm-hmm. They were the outsiders. They were different than the Jews. It was only the Jews that had Jesus, right? But then he went and talked to them. And that's like, it's like the modern day that, like the gays versus the straights, you know, like, and there's so many different categories you can mm-hmm. do that with right now. The For Biden, for Trump, like whatever, vaccines, not vaccines. It's all division. Mm-hmm. It's all division. And it, it was never meant to be this divisive, but that's where the enemy sneaks in, in my opinion. Absolutely. All this we division. We talk about this all the time. Oh, we talk about this a lot. All I, the time. Um, it's sad. It's very sad to see so much division. And instead of, it's like, the truth is, we have more in common with most humans on earth than we have not in common. We have more similarities than, I, d- I did this a lot, differences. Yeah. I could not think of the word last time, and here I am again. Thank you. You got my back. <laughs> We do. We have more in common. Yeah. More likes. Where people don't want to automatically no. judge you on the way you look or, or your, your differences. Or, yeah. The color of your skin. Mm-hmm. And this was something Pastor Daryl and I talked about. Head. Yeah. We talked about like, <sighs> I can't even think about it. You said shaved head and it threw me off. But we did. It was just like, we have more in common than we don't have in common. Mm-hmm. And people want to judge you by what they see. And what's different and people's differences make us uncomfortable. And that's why he would always say, if you don't understand someone, invite them over for dinner, break bread, have wine, have dinner with them and get to know them. And you'll find out you have a lot more in common with them than what's different about them. And that's what we did. That's how we became so close. We'd have meetings. They had us over for dinner. We had wine. We had them over here. We had them at our other house. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where our, our friendship came from. And Pastor Daryl always would preach about, and he said this about me before I gave my testimony, I see in Leticia the same Holy Spirit that's in me. I see that in her. And if we can, and every time I've been given the opportunity to sing or to speak, I always am like, God, like, let them see you. Like, let them get past lesbian, whatever. Let them get past short hair. She's married to Madi. Let them see you in me because I can't change anyone's heart. I know that about myself. Yeah. You know, I can be kind and that can go a long way. I can be loving and that can go a long way. Or I can be an asshole and then everything stops right there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so with the comment, again, can you be gay and Catholic? Well, that's th- 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 no, you can't. And also to the comment, he, whoever this person is, because I'm pretty sure they don't even have a picture. Um, obviously has a differing opinion and believes that being gay is a struggle quote and a temptation quote and probably a thorn in your side um as most people who believe that so he's either to me a straight man or a struggling person in the closet Mm -hmm. um because the loudest (laughs) are usually the ones who are in the closet it's the truth i was very loud when i was in the closet very opinionated Because I hated that thing in me that I didn't think was worthy or valuable or loving. And uh, that was the other thing. Like, just to go back to the Samaritan thing is I told mom, I was like, Jesus made us all in his image. And he didn't say that that meant that it all had to look the same. There's a vast diversity in creation. And that wasn't an accident. That's what I tell my all the time. You don't have to want that because everyone has it or like that because everyone does. What do you like? What do you want? Be you. Mm -hmm. Paulo likes his nails painted. You do you, dude. Whatever. I don't care. Um, Just be who you are. And I think the more back to the being brave thing, it's like I used to walk around with this fear of, oh my God, does this shirt make me look gay? Well, you are gay. You look gay. You're married to a woman. I don't know how much gayer you can look. The flannel's not going to make you look more gay. You like it, wear it. Um, because then that's probably like a protection thing. Like, yeah, I didn't want people to 
say anything mean to me because mm-hmm. I couldn't handle it or, um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. I was like, oh, I hope I'm recording. I am. <laughs> I know. That would have been terrible. But anyways, I have not responded to the guy. I do appreciate the comment. I don't think he watched the video. We obviously have differing opinions, which is fine as long as you're kind and respectful. And he was kind. He wasn't rude. Um, but he, I know that the interpretation of the Bible is it, it was misinterpreted in 1946. They changed the word. Homosexual was put in there. It did not mean who I am. did not mean LGBTQ. It meant pedophile or someone who was raping someone. Um, and the fact that he used the word fornication, like... Okay, that's real Bible-y, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just like, I get so irritated. Like, if y'all uh, could see the response I typed up and copied and pasted and sent to Monty and then deleted, that was, that was like, oh, I was so irritated when I saw it. Like, okay, sir, obviously you didn't watch the video. <laughs> like, yeah. um, But yes, can you be gay and loved by Jesus? Absolutely. You're made in his image and he does not make mistakes. I have a song I wrote and I was thinking about it yesterday. And it's like, he knows your name. Like he does not make mistakes. It will get better someday. Like, and it did, it does. It doesn't get better if you end your life. It ends. And I wrote that song because I was someone who struggled with suicide and my life was better at that time. And it's gotten even better in the Six years since I've written the song. Um, yeah, it's just he has no regrets. He it, God has no regrets in who he created you to be. And looking to society for approval instead of looking within and loving yourself and who all the quirkiness of you. Um, you can look to society. You can be miserable or you can look inside and just be you and know that he did not make, make a mistake. Not one mistake. Now, being an asshole, he did not do that. That was, whether it's through trauma or taught at home, we don't have to be jerks. Mm -hmm. You know, even to that guy. Like, I was like, I don't want to be a jerk. And my knee-jerk reaction was not nice. It was very, like, proud and defensive. I can get very defensive when my feelings get hurt. Um, Yeah. For those of you who don't know, my wife obviously knows this. Um, yeah. So, yes, you're absolutely loved by Jesus, whether you're gay, trans, bi, straight, mm-hmm. color of your skin, whatever. It doesn't. He did not make a mistake. He chose me to have hazel eyes and dark brown hair. I chose to bleach it. Um, you know what I mean? Like, he chose you to have hazel eyes and a big old dimple. Like he, he made you, it says he knitted you together in your mother's womb. Like David wrote that. And, uh, I think it was David. He talks about it (laughs) anyways. Um, like I read the scripture the other day, it said Jeremiah one, four through eight. It said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah says, Oh, sovereign Lord. I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. And the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you to. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. And this is a scripture I saw and I've, I saw this before I came out and as I was coming out and I always felt like it was a scripture that God was like, go to the people I tell you to and say what I tell you to say and I'm going to be with you. And that's something he's continually done for me in the past six years that we've been at more. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you're going to go up there and get prayer, and you're going to tell them you're gay, and you're going to trust me with rest. And you're going to tell them you sing worship, and here I am on the worship team. And you're going to talk to the pastor. I want you to email him and ask for a meeting. And then me and Daryl had a meeting, and then we developed this amazing relationship. And then I got to give my testimony, and here we are doing a podcast. And it's like, God put that verse on my heart all these years ago, nine years ago, ten years ago. And it has been something that's so faithful. He doesn't ever not show up for something that he tells me to do and calls me to do. I might not show up, Mm -hmm. but if I show up to something he's called me to do as scary as it is, he shows up there with me. And, uh, yeah, I don't know.
That's good. Yeah. Um, I think I might save the breakup thing for next episode. Yeah, we're this was a good episode. We'll have a part two to this. Part two, yeah. Yeah. Um, JoJo's killing it on Dancing with Stars, so I do have to say it. She is slaying it. They did amazing this week. <laughs> They did amazing. She is really good. Oh my gosh. They did the rumba and the salsa. Killed it. Next episode. Anyways. Watch Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. And next week we'll talk about the breakup and talk about our first breakups. I just think it's funny because my story is totally different than your story on that. So it'll be fun to talk about that. We've yeah. talked about it several times, but it always makes us laugh. I think we kind of make fun of each other because they're so different. So anyways, thank you all for listening. Thanks for coming back. And just, um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, it really does help us. If you are someone who is willing to comment, please comment on the video on YouTube. That always helps us. Or if you listen on Apple podcasts or Spotify, go comment on those, give us, you know, rate us. If you don't like the show, you don't have to comment. Um, but if you do, and you think someone, you know, could get something from it, please share this. It helps us get the word out. It helps us, um, just reach more people. And yeah, I mean, just like that scripture said, I'm just trying to do what I feel called to do. And we so appreciate y'all. So until next another. week, yeah, love one another. We will be back next week. I'm not going to take two more weeks off. <laughs> Thanks y'all. Peace. We're dating. Your mic is like just so far. You're gonna have to I'm like. Gonna scoot up with I know, but like you need to pull it the whole thing this way, not. Money. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're cute. I don't even know how to start this. I'm so tired. We have not done. I have not filmed in a month. I think maybe three weeks. Three weeks to a month. I forgot how to do this.